Ice is an example of a molecular solid. As the name suggests, molecular solids are composed of molecules. This can be a little bit confusing because the molecules contain covalent bonds. For example, ice is composed of water and the hydrogen and oxygen in water are covalently bonded to each other. But covalent bonds aren't what hold the molecules to each other. Molecular solids like ice are held together by intermolecular forces. London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole attractions, and even hydrogen bonding in ICE's example. Though we've done work comparing the strength of intermolecular forces to each other and comparing the boiling point of one substance to another, these intermolecular forces are not nearly as strong as covalent bonds and ionic bonds. So molecular solids aren't held together as firmly as our ionic solids or our covalent network solids. A strange aside with molecular solids is that noble gases can be solidified. You can make solid neon and solid argon, but when the noble gases solidify, they're not held together by covalent or ionic bonds. The noble gases are noble. The only things that would hold the noble gases together would be London dispersion forces. Even if you were to solidify a noble gas, it would only be held together by intermolecular forces. So though it's composed of individual atoms, we would still call it a molecular solid. So the key in defining these types to crystalline solids is not necessarily what they're made up of. A molecular solid can be made up of atoms, even though they're normally made up of molecules. The key in defining what type of crystalline solid you have is what forces are holding them together. Ionic solids are held together by ionic bonds. Covalent network solids are held together by covalent bonds. And molecular solids are held together by intermolecular forces. That defines the type of solid. As a result of these intermolecular forces, molecular solids have much lower melting points. An ice cube will melt in your hand. Fortunately, a diamond will not. Molecular solids tend to be a lot softer. If you've ever chewed on an ice cube, you know this. Molecular solids do not conduct electricity, though. And ice and sugar are all examples of molecular solids. And if you were to ever solidify a noble gas, even though they're made up of individual atoms, it would still be considered a molecular solid. The final type of solids on our list are metallic solids. Metallic solids are held together by metallic bonds. And what that means is that in a metal, some of the valence electrons are free to move from one atom to another. They're not localized to an individual atom. These free moving electrons form what's called an electron C. This electron C is able to kind of smother or blanket the nuclei of the atoms together and keep them from shifting around. Now this blanket of electrons doesn't hold the nuclei in very firmly. And this leads to all the properties of metals that we know. This is why metals are malleable. This is why metals are ductile. The electron C also reflects light very well. This is why metals are lustrous. These free moving electrons easily conduct electricity, but can also conduct heat. And this is why metals are good conductors. It's all based on this metallic bonding. So metals are also formed of individual atoms. Unlike covalent network solids or molecular solids, they're held together by this new metallic bonding. The melting points of metals can be all over the place. Mercury is a liquid at room temperature and gallium will melt in your hand. Titanium, however, has a really high melting point and is used on spacecraft. The rigidity of metals can vary all over the place. A thin sheet of lead will fold over under its own weight, where steel can hold up skyscrapers. The key differentiating factor for metallic solids is that the metallic bonding allows for the conduction of heat and electricity. If you want a real clear test as to whether a solid is metallic or not, you can test its conductivity. And any element that's a metal would fall under the category of a metallic solid. Before we leave this chart, I do want to point out something. That it's possible for covalent network solids, molecular solids, and metallic solids to all be formed of individual atoms. The Zoomdahl text gives a category of atomic solids, solids that are composed of individual atoms, but I think that's a really broad category. I think there are several different types of atomic solids. Instead of discussing what the solids are composed of, I feel it's more important to consider what the solids are held together by. One final thing about the text is that in this reading, there is page after page after page showing diagrams of how these crystals can form and how to most closely pack the different unit cells of the crystals. Face body centered, cubic body centered, hexagonal. There are a number of different ways to do this. This leads to very interesting geometry problems. And if you ever work in a produce store and want to stack oranges, this is also fascinating reading for you. That's far the scope of this course.
I'm not really worried about it. So you can skip over the sections that show all of the close packing models and just get to the descriptions of the different types of solids.